Welcome back to the show, everybody. Your host, Michael, on a Thursday evening. We are going to go over a few videos here um, about alien conspiracies. Well, of course, the people who are doing the videos don't believe that these are conspiracies. They they actually believe what they're saying, but I get the impression these are conspiracies. I have not seen these videos yet, so this is one of those first impression reviews where I'm going to uh, give you my impression without having seen the uh, the videos. But I can tell from, I don't know, maybe the five seconds that I did see, because I, I didn't see the whole thing, but I've seen about five seconds on each. Um, I can tell that we're, we're in for a treat. So <laughs> you're going to get my reaction as a Catholic to these. It, it'll be a fun show. Um, I won't be able to monetize this one because some of these come from the History Channel. Um, so I definitely won't be able to monetize it. So y'all send me some super chats or something. Uh, go join Patreon if you don't mind, um, and definitely subscribe to this channel. All right, let's let's go ahead and bring it up. As I was searching through uh, YouTube trying to find some videos to review, there was a commercial that came on. Now, I cannot find the commercial, unfortunately. I wish I could, but I found the video that the commercial was for. And that's going to be the first video that we review together. Um, let me pull it up here on my screen and uh, let's enable the audio. Um, okay, let's see. All right. Um, let me read the title here um, Initiation with Matthias de Stefano. The text is really small for me. Deep history of Atlantis and Mu. I've, I've heard of Atlantis before. Um, but, but you got me on the Moo. <laughs> the Moo is going to be new. <laughs> but again, the, the, the commercial that I saw that, um, led me to this video was <laughs> just draw chopping. I was just watching this thing thinking, my goodness, this is really happening. This is real. This is an actual video posted on YouTube. And this guy really believes what he's saying. Um, so let, let's go ahead and dive in. I don't know who this guy is. Again, he just came up in my video feed as I was looking for alien videos. I came across this as one of the advertisements. Again, th this is the full video that for the advertisement that I saw. Okay, now let's go ahead and watch it. Uh, let me know also if you can't hear audio or anything. So, a journey to the origin of the universe. Oh, that's a, that's a light topic, right? The origin of the universe. All right, so let, let's hear them out. One million BC. How does the past help us move forward? I am your host, Matias Stefano. In this episode, I am going to explain the purpose of understanding how ancient past will help us evolve as humans today. Whoa. That's a pretty big undertaking in one video that's 30 minutes. All right, let's do it. By the way, I'm not going to sit here and watch all 30 minutes. I have some other views that are videos that we're going to review. We're not watching this all 30 minutes. <clears throat> 500,000 years ago, the world started to split into four species that came from the sky. Once this four civilizations from the sky split the world in many parts and they took the information of, of humanity and they put their own blood within them. They start to create their races so uh, each race of humanity could have the information of one of those of those species. First of all, I don't understand what he just said. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not actually understand what he was saying. I, I think I may have the gist of it. Um, aliens, I guess, I don't know, infected us with 
alien blood or I don't know something weird. But where where is he getting this stuff from? He knows what happened five hundred thousand years ago, and there were four alien species. Is there some kind of archaeological evidence for this or something? This was done. So, as the Confederation said, we had to be all together in just one. Wait, there was an alien confederation that said we have to be all together as one. That's pretty specific. I mean, he knows of a discussion among a confederation of aliens. That's very, very specific information. Where is this coming from? So unity for them was to put all the blood of all of them inside of us. And these four first civilizations were the test to... Uh, okay, so all of these aliens put their blood into us. Okay, I'm following. To see if we humanity were able to understand, to accept and to keep being alive through the manipulation of our DNA through one million years. What? First of all, this is what happens when you give a camera a microphone to just anybody, all right? And this, this is what happens when you give a platform to just anybody on YouTube. They, they could just grab a camera and a microphone and disseminate the most absurd views. This, this is exactly what happens right here. Comedy hour. <laughs> when the planets start to change again, humanity... Mm -hmm went through all the planet and filled up every region of the whole planet. A lot of population started to grow in every region of the planet, mm -hmm. many and thousands of humans around the planet. Mm -hmm. Not like we are now, but huge amount of people were living in every part of the planet. It sounds perfectly credible. Okay. Ruled <laughs> by these four civilizations uh -huh. until the planet hit when the planet got a lot of hot and suddenly the ice age it got a lot of hot <laughs> <laughs> i'm learning about the mysteries of the universe from the guy who says it got a lot of hot <laughs> ended so nemnir the giant ones they did nemnir well we have a specific name here of of these aliens nemnir where do we get this from disappear they died and they went away from this planet so the snake ones were the ones to rule during the snake aliens were the ones to rule because the Nimir aliens left. Right. Let me let me do my Dr. Evil. Right. <laughs> that time, once the snake ones start to go all over the planet, another ice age came, so they they all die. The planet was so cold that all reptilians were uh weren't able to be here to live in this planet so they went away humans okay so they're smart enough to give us all of their blood but not how to survive cold weather what so we're the only ones that were able to survive to that so they decided to prepare humanity to keep going with their rules so that's why they create two civilizations where alithir and aesir could survive through human bodies. Who are these people? I feel that I see it. Why? Look, word of advice, okay? If you're going to introduce people on the internet to a new topic, please define terms. Tell, tell don't just throw out names and terms and assume that I. I don't know any of this stuff. You have to introduce me. I don't know who Ethir and Enyel or whoever these people are. I, I I can't even repeat back what he said. I don't know. I'm not familiar. Can you please give us some background here? To do so, they created the civilization of Mu by the oh. Alithir and by the Aes. So now we're finding out what Mu is. Okay, it's a civilization. All right. They created the civilization of Atlantis. Okay. Okay. Both were ruled by the laws of Alithir and Aesir, and they separated the world in two. Okay. The ones living in the Pacific Ocean and the right. ones living in the Atlantean Ocean. Right, right, right. So so some aliens living in the Pacific Ocean and some in the... Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, I'm following you. That's how they were <laughs> split in two to control 
the inner world and the outer world. As the, the inner, you mean inside the Earth's core or something? I mean, what do you mean the inner and the outer? Uh, let me pull up the comment section from y'all. Let me let me see what y'all are saying. I can't see y'all in the chat, so let me let me pull it up here in front of me on my phone. <sighs> Again, I can't monetize this stuff, so y'all send me some super chats. Um, <laughs> somebody says, I can't watch this. I can feel my brain. Uh, hold on, it moved on me. <laughs> Beginning to ooze of my ears. Maybe that's the plan of Ethir and Esnir or whoever these people are. Uh, Hercule, thank you for the super chat. Praying for you and good to be able to catch a live show. Well, hey, I'm glad glad you're here. And again, thank you for that super chat. Alithir, the Moon people were trying to look for the connection of the inner world. The Atlantean ones were the ones to rule the outer world. And that's the main, the, the main idea why both civilizations for us were in a kind of a war. Move. They were in kind of a war. <clears throat> Some more advice. If you're pre-recording this stuff, you might want to do a couple takes um, instead of just trying to do all of this in one shot. You, you might want to maybe practice your lines a little more. Was this civilization that filled up all west of America and east of Asia and Australia? all the pacific ocean was built by them and was thank you for the super chat here ryan pope says honestly some of jay dyer stuff is comparable and somebody saying that he was on gaia tv no way seriously they have some really weird stuff taught by them to all the women and men that were chaman and at these regions how to find the truth within and that's why native americans People from the Pacific Ocean and people from East China, from Japan, from South Asia and Australia were the Aboriginal people that were looking for the connection within. But in the other hand... Are y'all following this? What I mean, I know that these are English words, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure that... I'm following the way in which they're all put together. And we had the civilization Atlantis, where I was part of. Wait, you were part of it too, M Matthias? Wait, hey, how did this happen? You were part of the Atlantis civilization, and you know this how? I want to know. Tell me more about that. Don't don't continue with anything else. I, I need to know right now. I think it's Matthias. Yeah, Matthias De Stefano. I need to know. What what was it like being part of the Atlanta civilization? Was it pretty cool? I, I want more details here. That we were taught by <clears throat> the same people from the Confederation how to do the look inside by building civilizations outside. So that's why instead of looking the sphere of life within in our hearts, we were looking for building those spheres through temples, through pyramids. Makes perfect sense, right? I mean, it's the best explanation I've ever heard for the pyramids and temples in you know, ancient antiquity. Best explanation, hands down. But that had a purpose. Well, yeah. Mu people were people connected to the planet Earth, to uh -huh. the crystals, to the plants, to the to, animals. To the crystals. To the crystals. <laughs> what? How did we get... How do we get on crystals? <laughs> are you talking about the crystals in the caves? I mean, what are you talking about? And they kept the evolution through respecting the, the planet <laughs> and going to the main spots of the planet by meditating, by levitating. They were communicating each other by telepathy and they were not much humans as the Atlantean people were. Right. What? <laughs> what is he talking about? They were communicating with each other through levitation, but they were not really humans. Because, what? Huh? <laughs> I, 
I need a, a, a little bit more clarification here, uh, Matthias. And <clears throat> can we go back to that part where you came from Atlantis? I'm still trying to figure that part out. I haven't gotten past that one yet. Uh, <laughs> and then the crystals. I mean, that, that one just kind of hit me um, out of nowhere. I, I don't know where the crystals came from or what their significance is, but they were they were thrown out and mentioned here. And I would like to know more about these crystals. <laughs> <laughs> what are these people smoking? <laughs> Atlantean people were the most humans because Arturian people prepare them to have the blue blood, to have the strength to be uh, rulers of the consciousness of the planet. I get the impression that Matthias has been studying this for years and is so used to all of this that he doesn't realize how wacky he sounds right now and also he doesn't realize how foreign all of this sounds to those of us who have not studied this craziness before no self-awareness -aware going on here all right thank you for the soup chat in the whole bill. he says uh google help me find this he is indigo child who has memory of his old life in atlantean colony of kim is uh, so so that's that's this guy, the Matthias Indigo Child, and so he has a memory of his old life. I figured it was through something like that, you know, through some <clears throat> kind of, you know, what what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, goodness, I'm drawing a blank. But when you have the ability to uh, see things remotely that happen in the past, or maybe even the present that are invisible, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. I figured that's maybe where this is coming from. This video gets L. Ron Hubbard's seal of approval. <laughs> is it, yeah, is L. Ron Hubbard as crazy as this? I don't know. I haven't really sat there and read Dianetics or anything. So. And that's why they were taught how to open the portals of the planet and how to be connected to the Confederation. confederation. Right, right. I mean, I mean, naturally, you would want to open the portals of the planet, so. You know. The way they have to do this, it was by building all these spheres of life in the portals of the structure of the network in eighth dimension, but here in the third dimension. That's why Atlantis has this goal of fill the whole planet with civilizations and colonies where they build these temples and these pyramids. Right. Aligned Right, I mean that, that makes sense. That that explains why. Sure. Thank you, Jedediah, for the super chat. He says cheapest possible super chat message. I appreciate that. And with the network of consciousness of eighth dimension, we used to remember this story with the name of the people from Lemuria. Lemuria is not the name as neither was Mu, neither was Atlantis. These are names that people from history used to to give to understand the purpose of, uh, of uh, or to 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 understand the region where they were supposed to live. So Lemurian people were, were not called like Lemur. Lemur are monkeys from the regions of the Indian Ocean. Those kind of monkeys are in Sumatra and also in Madagascar. So a French guy, he was trying to explain how these monkeys were connected from a french guy <laughs> really specific there a french guy was trying to explain i mean why these monkeys are there but these two faraway islands so he said must it should be a continent before that connected those two islands and matthias i'm really getting the impression you did not script any of this you just ad-libbed it all in one shot one take he called that Lemuria, so he could... Is is Lemuria the same thing as the Bermuda Triangle? Um, I don't think so. I think that looks larger than the Bermuda Triangle. I explain why these two islands had the same monkey. Mm -hmm. That's how Lemuria comes out. Right, 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 right. It has just 200 years old, the name. And Mu is the one of the real names that it have in the Pacific Ocean. Right. So the ones that lived in the indian ocean they uh -huh. were just trying to to protect themselves from atlantis oh was... i see they were just trying to protect themselves oh i feel so bad for them having that they had to do that thank you for your super chat river run wait dude somebody get 
Michael, that old cartoon from the eighties about Mormon Jesus. I saw that. I've seen that before. The one from that Ed Decker put out. Yeah, I saw. I saw that one. <laughs> that one was fun. It's a classic. It was another name <clears throat> which Greek people give to the civilizations that was behind the mountains that they call the god Atlas. Atlas was the protector of the world. So the mountains from there, they were called the Atlas Mountains. The sea was called the Atlantic. And Y'all, is any of this familiar to y'all? I mean, ha have y'all ever heard of this stuff before? Or is this just, is it just me that this is new information for? Um, or is this really a thing and, and I'm just oblivious to it, but everybody else knows about it. And all the islands behind that were called the Atlantidas okay. in Greek. So that's why we still today call Atlantis that land, but the names also are different. How I remember it, the Mu was called Yomi Om. Oh, so, so you remember this from like, a past life? Is that what's going on, Matthias? And Atlantis we used to call Hephaestion. I still don't know who Matthias is or what he's trying to tell me. It would have been nice if we got an introduction at the beginning of this video. You know, maybe stating, who, I know you said your name, but maybe who you are, what your credentials are, where you're, where you're coming from, what your perspective is, why this is reliable information. That, that would have helped. Atlantis civilization was created in between the islands that we now call Green Cape, Azores, and Canary Islands. By going out from these small islands in the middle of the Atlantean Ocean. The question going through my mind right now, frankly, is do these people have driver's licenses? I, I need to know. I need to know. Oh, do they function? I mean... The guy who put this together, Matthias and, and Associates, I mean, they, they probably really believe this. I don't think that they're, <clears throat> you know, I don't think that they're just doing this for fun. I think that they actually believe what they're saying. I want to know, have they actually been granted a driver's license from the DMV? I mean, I want to know what was that trip like when you go to the DMV, if you're Matthias and you go and present yourself and, and you start talking about Moo in Atlantis to the DMV guy there, you know, and, and they still felt like, you know what, Matthias, we're going to go ahead and grant you that driver's license. You're, you're perfectly fit to get behind a wheel. I want to know how that really went down. I want to know how Matthias got a bank account. I want to know how he purchased on Amazon or wherever he got it from, the camera that he's using, the microphone. I want to know how he went about and functioned in daily life believing this kind of insanity. I, I just need to know. I mean, I find it fascinating that somebody could believe such crazy things but then function in life as a normal person presumably presumably i mean i i don't know maybe matthias doesn't but if he has a camera and has access to the youtube i would think that there's some ability to function in normal life i, I don't know they were trying to <clears throat> all the regions that were in the opposite part of the world and that's why a few of the Mu people start a war against atlantean people to mm. protect the ocean most of the new people knew that they were that their civilization has to end so they just just went away but a few of them stayed in the indian ocean they they just went away they just went away <laughs> yeah i mean that, that's kind of what you do when you know that you need to just end you just kind of go away right trying to protect the pacific ocean mm -hmm. from the atlantean people coming through the mountains <laughs> from the snakes <laughs> coming from the mountains from the snake what <laughs> we're back to the snake again what the snake people what who are these snake people during the verge era while atlantis was the biggest civilization you could ever think about this world order that we have was held by the ice age that we were having this ice age allows us to be connected to every book in history of humanity and the whole world. So, wait, what? The Ice Age enables us to be connected to every book in history in the whole world. Is that what I just heard? I think that was verbatim what I just heard. 
Huh? Ice <laughs> Ice connects me to every book in the whole world. And wait, if there's an ice age going on, how are there still books in the world? And I mean, how could you read them anyway? And I don't know. I'm I'm not a scientist or anything to know the compatibility of an ice age with the endurance of a book, but <laughs> I wouldn't think that they would endure, you know. I mean, books are normally made of paper, so I don't think, you know, that's going to last very long in that condition. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe paper lasts very well in ice. I, I, I would have thought that that's not necessarily the case, but I've never gone in and experimented. But <clears throat> I'm still trying to figure out, though, an ice age somehow connects me with every book. I mean, that sounds awesome. Why can't we get an ice age now? I want to be connected with every book ever written right now in the whole world. That's pretty cool. Does this include Kindle and electronic books though? That's my question. Are we just talking about paperbacks and hardbacks? Are we always also talking about electronic books? I need to know. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat river. Run. <laughs> we were a civilization that was connected to cold that was connected to the ice mm. and all the <coughs> work of pyramids that we have created around the world mm -hmm. was connected <coughs> to the information of the north pole and the south pole <coughs> okay so that's what the pyramids were for they were to connect <coughs> sorry <coughs> still getting over <coughs> this sickness over here so the pyramids were to connect us to information in the North Pole and South Pole? Did I hear that correctly? I thought the pyramids were a Death Star anyway, not some kind of information center. <clears throat> Through our process of civilization, we realized that we were so split in the world that a few civilizations and colonies of Atlantis started to think different from Atlantis. So they started to ask themselves, why don't we do another thing? Why don't we? Here's <clears throat> evidently, here's how he can be so specific. Moholville, thank you for the super chat. He says he has had perfect past life recall of incarnation spanning thousands of years throughout many galaxies from Gaia.com. That makes sense because I was kind of wondering how, <clears throat> how exactly is it that he knows this kind of information to this? specific level and that explains it now if i mean if you have access to all of the memories through reincarnation of previous people who ever lived i mean <clears throat> yeah you you would have a whole lot of specific details that that makes perfect sense i believe gaia.com now i believe what they're saying because it's on gaia.com it has to be reliable if it's on there <sighs> well thank you jedediah for the super chat has any pope weighed in on the atlantean uh, hegemony <laughs> <coughs> not to my knowledge no but they need to there needs to be a magisterial intervention at this point <laughs> wow this is absolutely psychotic um okay <laughs> i need to get uh some a drink because <clears throat> i'm over here coughing so give me one second i'm gonna step away let's, let's take a brief intermission uh this is what happens when you you do things live sometimes you gotta step away and get a refill on the coffee so that you don't continue to cough in everybody's ears it's one of the downsides to doing things live but at the same time saves me plenty of time so that i don't have to edit things and upload them which takes forever so give me one second
<clears throat> All right. Not sure how much longer I'm going to be able to take this from Matthias. We might be moving on to the next video here in just a minute. <laughs> but I'll try to endure a little bit more and learn about the origin of mankind. And then, you know, our destiny and junk and stuff. We do a, 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 dif a different thing. Atlantean civilization started to be worried about what happened, what would happen with the consciousness of the planet and our civilizations if the colony starts to split. Gregory says Michael needs to put some ice in his coffee so he can connect to the information in the North Pole. <laughs> and they start to do different things. So the first conflict that they had was economical, for okay. sure. Okay, okay. Economics start to run bad for Atlantis because the colonists yeah. stop giving them stuff and they start to charging them for the stuff. Right. So a lot of people from the mainland, they start to go to leave to the colonies to have uh -huh. the main uh, sources mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to do their jobs and all that. Right. So <clears throat> when they start to went away, the, there was the second problem that was education this guy has an incredible imagination <laughs> as many people were leaving atlantis the temples were getting empty so a lot of people from atlantis stopped learning how to be connected to the self and started to learn how to go out the island and they left the temples of knowledge oh so, man that why would you leave the temples of knowledge i mean are you kidding me I want to be in the temple of knowledge. This brought a uh, new generations <coughs> of politics that doesn't have this kind of knowledge and this kind of uh, education. Right. I mean, naturally. Yeah. So the problem was politics after that when they. Man, I mean, politics always gets in the way, man. Try to rule <coughs> and say, we, we are not going to the core. We are going to take the colonies back. So Atlantis has this shift in their politics that was not connecting everyone as one, but to rule them all and be together. By this control that they tried to hell around the, the, the planet, they forgot how to be connected. This music in the background is really inspiring me and it makes me feel like what I'm hearing is that much more credible. I mean, man to the planet so the planet start to protect themselves itself from the consciousness of civilization so that that made that <clears throat> every node as a flower start to close and go down to the inner world so the inner world start to hold the energy of the planet and the outer world was not able to get that information anymore and that made that all the books melted. Oh, it man, no. A... All the books melted. I was wondering what happened to all the books that we would have access to through the Ice Age. So it melted all the books? That's terrible. So I guess we did find out whether or not, you know, ice and books are compatible. It's, it's, it melted all of the books. This is horrible. Man. Bet you could have found all kinds of amazing things in there. More than the great library in alexandria that burned down you know I, I bet there were some amazing ancient secrets that melted this is terrible this is horrible this is like the worst tragedy i've ever heard of a new heat era that the planet the ice age ended right and then all this water that was held into the libraries start to go out from the northern sea from the baltic sea from yeah, I mean, because water and books don't really mix. So th this totally, yeah, I'm, I'm following you here. Uh -huh. Bering Sea, all this water start to come down to the oceans. And that's what you mostly remember. And that brought a war. Wait, yeah. I'm, I mostly remember this? That's what he said you. You know, second person, singular or plural, presumably. I don't know. But you, uh, is that me? I remember this. I don't. I don't recall remembering this. Or in the two <clears throat> colonies to, to see which one would be the next one to rule the world. 
Okay. So that's why Atlantis made blew up the the <laughs> pyramids of some other places. Oh. So they couldn't have the control. Okay, so they blew up other pyramids. That is horrible. Why didn't they build blow up the pyramids in Egypt though? That's so they blew up some pyramids, but not others. Or were these other pyramids not built yet? So <clears throat> by good politics, Egypt was one of the only colonies that allows Atlantean people to come and not find oh. them. Oh, so, that was really nice of them. All y'all Egyptian Catholics out there watching the show, thank you so much for allowing those Atlantean people to, to come to your territory. That, that was awesome. You really opened up the borders to them. But that's why they <laughs> recreated this civilization mm -hmm. like Atlantis in the River Nile. Okay, okay. So they recreated Atlantis in, in the Nile River. Okay. Can, can I go and see that recreation today? Is, is it still there? There and Mexico <coughs> were, were just one of the two of them that allow Atlantean people. Shout out to all the Mexicans. Y'all were also harboring the Atlantean civilization, I guess, or I don't know. To keep going. So many of the others were destroyed or their pyramids were destroyed. And that's why we don't have now the, the big monuments that we used to have at that time. And we had this this new temples rebuilt by the pieces of those ancient pyramids okay so we had some other ancient pyramids but we don't have them anymore so we rebuilt these the pyramids that we currently have in egypt and mexico from the pieces that we you that we had for these other pyramids mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's no corroborating evidence archaeologically for any of this. This is just all information that he knows through past lives um, in the process of reincarnation. Very, very reliable stuff. Okay. That's why 15,000 years ago, we left the seas to become river civilizations. Why would you do that? Why? Why would you leave the sea? What's wrong with the sea that you have to leave it to become, you know, land people? What was wrong with the sea? Is it that we just didn't like the water? We didn't like being wet. Is that what it was? And that's why the next civilization was Chem, the one that was in the River Nile, and also the ones that were in the rivers in China, in the rivers of Mesopotamia, in the rivers of Pakistan and India, Oh, he's throwing together all kinds of civilizations and territories. It has to be true. The rivers of America, <clears throat> mm -hmm. Amazonia, and the Andes Mountains. This area, mm -hmm. it was a Mu area in which we as beings recognize the power of the self from within, from the native. And after that, Atlantean people came and added its information to the Andes Mountains through the Amazon River. I'm fatigued. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. I tried to make it all the way through, but I knew I wasn't going to make it. <laughs> I'm tapping out. Matthias, you got me. I'm done. I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I can't even listen to another second. I gotta. We, we got to move on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe y'all were enjoying that, but... I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I feel like this is torture. Okay, let's move on. Now, this one is from Ancient Aliens. Secret Vatican archives contain explosive revelations about the secret of Fatima. The Catholic Church for a very long time would not acknowledge what was happening with the children or Fatima. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The extraterrestrials give to the children a telepathic message saying you are not alone on this planet. We are here. We have been here some thousands of years ago. So it wasn't the Virgin Mary that appeared to the children at Fatima. It was actually extraterrestrial, extraterrestrial saying we have been here. We're here. We're aliens. So that was actually the message of Fatima. Huh. Okay. We observe you. 
complete. They observe us. That that's what they wanted us. Okay. Prepare mankind that we will return again. Right, right, right. So this wasn't a message of repentance and you know about God and the Virgin Mary and you know people in hell and sinning and again the need for repentance. It wasn't any of that. It was about we're aliens. We're here. We've been watching you. And we want you to prepare to get ready for our arrival again. That's what the aliens told the children of Fatima. And the Vatican covered this up for a very long time. And, uh, oh, okay, and how, how do we know this information? All this story of Fatima went to the Vatican. Oh, uh. But I mean, no, no good conspiracy theory is good unless you have a reference to the Vatican. <laughs> River Run, thank you for the soup chat. Be not afraid. <laughs> is it possible as ancient astronauts? You, you hear it. Is it possible? Ancient aliens is notorious for this. They'll give you this outrageous theory and then they'll say, is it possible? And then you'll have another guy who comes on and says, it's possible that this happened. And if this happened, then it's possible that this could have happened. And then if this happened, then it's possible that this could have happened. That That's literally, I just gave you the blueprint for every ancient aliens episode out there. Do not theorists contend that the Catholic Church censored the messages that were received in Fatima? Of course they did. Of course they did. Of course, they, they censored it. They did not want you to know the truth. And that is that there are aliens and that we are here. For some reason, though, these aliens weren't able to communicate this to the entire human race to prepare us that they're coming. They had to go to a couple children at Fatima. Um, and sadly enough, their plan failed because the Catholic Church then censored those children. So the aliens weren't able to get their you know message out there. For some reason, they can't really communicate that with anyone else. So it uh, seems the Catholic Church has, you know, impeded that that information from the, from the aliens. But the ancient astronaut theorists, you need not worry. The ancient astronaut theorists have given us the truth. Thank you for that. The kids were given three messages and the Pope refused to release the third message. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So this relates now to the third secret and <clears throat> keeping it hidden for a while. And he just refused for us to know the message of the third secret, which was that there are aliens and that they're coming back. Okay. The third message apparently talks about extraterrestrial life. Right. So it's not actually the third message that was released what 20 something years ago i think somewhere around there maybe a little less than 20 years so that's not the third message that's just another vatican cover-up the real third message is about ancient aliens returning to earth now that is sensational yeah because to me to deny the revelation of that particular message and that is exactly what the pope did oh man and just simply your, you know, word is completely credible, Mr. Ancient Aliens guy. I actually reached out to him. I wanted to have him on the show. I think that would have been the funnest interview I would have ever done. What's his name? I forget the guy's name. I think it's a Greek name. Um, I, I really wanted to have the, you know, the, the Ancient Aliens, who, the guy that I have that we just saw that was also on the um, thumbnail that I did for this video. He's like, it's aliens, bro. That guy. Um, yeah, I really I reached out to him on his website um about a year ago and invited him on. And um he never responded. I, I guess he couldn't take me seriously. Um I maybe my show is, is not credible enough for him. Um, so he, he never responded or accepted my my invitation. But that would have been the best interview ever. I would have asked him the funnest questions. So <laughs> Maybe y'all can petition him to come on the show. <coughs> and I wonder why. Some contend that the miracle of Fatima is one of many events that describe visitations from extraterrestrial messengers. 
Researchers also point to the voices described by Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc was in on this too? Man, I'm so disappointed in her. Joan, Joan, why didn't you tell us that there were aliens? What were you doing? Why didn't you tell us? Or maybe she tried to tell us, but the Catholic Church censored her? Is that what happened? Is that why she was put to death? Because she was trying to tell us the truth about the ancient aliens that were going to be returning. Again, for some reason, they're not able to communicate that with you know, mankind directly as a whole. Uh, they have to go to these individual people here and there. Okay. <clears throat> Visions received in Lourdes by Bernadette Subaros. Oh, Lords, y'all were in on this too? Serious? And countless stories depicted in the Hebrew Bible. Man, I'm so disappointed. I mean, even the Bible now is backing this stuff up. So, I mean, that whole thing with Ezekiel, what he's encountering there in chapter one of Ezekiel, has to be a spaceship, right? It can't be an alien. It has to be a spaceship. That was that's what was going on in the Hebrew Bible. Okay, it's it's adding up. It's it's making sense. In which similar events are described. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the Vatican knows far more about life in the universe than they have acknowledged. Perhaps, perhaps. I mean, maybe they do, maybe they don't, but perhaps they do. Mm -hmm. But does a belief in alien life question the omnipotence of a supreme being? I mean, there, there's absolutely no way to square the concept of aliens with a supreme being. It's just not possible. They're entirely incompatible because the concept of created aliens is entirely incompatible with the concept of the uncreated right i mean those those couldn't possibly be reconciled of course the vatican knows about extraterrestrial life but to suggest that because extraterrestrials exist that means there is no god is total nonsense yeah, I mean, it is total nonsense. I mean, it doesn't logically follow. So, Vatican, why don't you just come out and tell us the truth? Stop hiding what Joan of Arc was trying to tell us. And what happened to Fatima and Lourdes? Just tell us the truth that there really are other aliens because that's not incompatible with God. What's wrong with you, the Vatican? <clears throat> was that it? Oh, come on. Seriously? I want more. That was it? All right, whatever. Let's go on to the last one here. Another ancient aliens. Again, I can't monetize this, so super chat me. Thank you, Gregory, for the super chat. Is it possible the Vatican spies intercepted Michael Lofton's message to Giorgio uh, Tsoukalos? That's his name, right? In order to cover up the secret message of Fatima. It's possible. It's possible. I mean, it it could be the case, right? It is possible. Therefore, it's true just because it's possible, right? All right. So this one is on religious rituals. Mm -hmm. This one sounds promising. Let's do it. <clears throat> Does human blood possess life-sustaining properties far beyond its function inside the body? What is it with these conspiracy theories in human blood? Why are they so obsessed with blood? This is really weird. And if so, could the substance known as ambrosia be flowing through the veins of every human? Ambrosia flowing through our veins? What? What are we talking about? As far as many ancient astronaut theorists are concerned, the answer is yes. And they say... <laughs> of course it's yes to them. ...just that this profound notion was first conveyed to humankind more than 2,000 years ago by a man named... Jesus. No way. No way. So this was communicated to us by Jesus himself. Okay. Vatican City. Back to the Vatican. Again, no conspiracy theory is complete without the Vatican in it. 2019. Okay. Thousands of pilgrims bow their heads as Pope Francis performs the liturgy of the Eucharist and consecrates the offerings of bread and wine. Okay. According to church historians, the ceremony's roots lie in the last supper Jesus shared with his disciples. I'm following you, I'm following you, okay. <clears throat> shortly before he sacrificed his life on the cross. All right. And thank you, Mahovo, for the super chat. Invite Eric Von Daniken to the show. Would he even be willing to come on? 
if if only as he passed the bread <clears throat> jesus said take this and eat it it is my body okay and as he passed the wine he said drink this it is the blood of the covenant mm -hmm. and out of that moment at a meal grew a great ritual right a ceremony a sacrament that is repeated to this day around the world by millions of people okay in the roman catholic tradition during the mass the priest is empowered by the prayers that energize the bread and the wine such that they become transformed energize transform not exactly the appropriate language but okay or transubstantiated now nah, there we go there that's better terminology into the living presence <clears throat> of the body and the blood of christ i'm following you so far okay Transubstantiation is one of the Catholic Church's most exalted mysteries. Catholics are encouraged to believe that through this miracle, somehow these ordinary wafers. Encouraged to believe, not required, but encouraged. Okay. An ordinary wine become the blood and body of Jesus. Well, it of course be by the power of the Holy Spirit, but sure, yeah, okay. Could this rite of turning bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus really have otherworldly origins? Could it? Maybe it could. Let, let's let's hear it out. Isn't it interesting that mm -hmm. we have numerous traditions around the globe telling mm -hmm. us that blood is the substance reserved for the gods? Uh huh. <clears throat> what does that have to do with um? with the eucharist um in the doctrine of the eucharist are we saying that blood is reserved for gods is that what we're we're saying with transubstantiation what, what, what what's going on here now we have to ask is there a connection between the ritual of the catholic mass and extraterrestrials I mean, it's a legitimate question. Is there a connection? Uh, I, let's find out. Thank you for the super chat. The pale Galilean says ancient aliens definitely bull, but a lot of ancient astronaut theories are cosmic horror stories waiting to happen. Love, Lovecraft for the win, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for that super chat. Uh, you, you'll find you'll find an endless amount of entertainment from ancient aliens. Uh, I, I can vouch for that much, but that's about all I can really say about them. <sighs> Maybe it's possible by imbibing certain bloods, the extraterrestrials are actually able to extend their lifespans to incredible degrees. Wait, what? Hold on, what? So let's look at that again. What? And extraterrestrials. Maybe it's possible by imbibing certain bloods, the extraterrestrials are actually able to extend their lifespans to incredible degrees. Okay, so maybe by the aliens drinking certain blood, they're able to extend their lifespan. What, what does this have to do with the Eucharist? So when Jesus talked about the blood of the covenant, just maybe Jesus was talk just maybe. talking in a symbolic fashion when he talked about how wine and bread sustains us, but something very, very different sustained him. Yeah, because there's all kinds of indications that that's what he was trying to communicate to us, right? Because all of the gospels testify to that being the case. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that the wine that sustains us is the parallel of the blood for Jesus. The wine that sustains us is the parallel for the blood of Jesus. I'm I'm still not I'm still not exactly understanding what is being claimed. <laughs> Maybe I'm just very dense, but I'm not exactly understanding the connection between aliens you know expanding their lifespan by drinking blood and how that connects to us drinking the blood of christ and how that is different for jesus and his blood what exactly were we saying thank you enslaved by truth for your super chat he says insert clever comment here yeah 
Angel Gonzalez, thank you for your super chat. Uh, River Run, thank you for yours. He says, hey, did you get my video of me teaching RCIA? Or how did you get a video of me teaching RCIA? <laughs> is that is that you, River? Was that you that we're, <laughs> we're watching here? <laughs> so I don't have any other videos. Is, is this you that we're watching? No, I'm, I'm playing with you. Um, <laughs> I, I don't... I must admit, I'm not really following what they're saying here. Maybe y'all can help me out in the chat. <clears throat> if alien beings have been coming to Earth for thousands of years, is it possible that they've evolved, is it possible? evolved to a point where they do not physically consume food in the way that humans do? But are so they maybe they don't physically consume food in the way that humans do. What does this have to do with the Eucharist again? Able to draw sustenance from certain energetic substances. Oh, okay. And what does that have to do with the Eucharist again? I'm still confused. What did any of this have to do with the Eucharist? I'm not following. Maybe y'all were. Thank you for your super chat, Rocket Man. <clears throat> Michael, you should watch Islam apologist Yusuf Estes and his expl explanation. Hold on. What is this? Oh, we might have another video because something just started playing for me and it looks like it was the advertisement that I was trying to find for the video that we watched earlier. We'll probably watch that in just a second here. Michael, you should watch Islam Apologist Yusuf Estes and his explanation for the origin of the Catholic Church. Can you maybe email that to me so that I could take a look at it, maybe review it um, at the very least for Comedy Hour? Uh, let me share my screen again and see if we can watch this uh, quick advertisement as our our last video here i think this is the commercial that i was trying to find so let, let's let's watch it together mm. and the syrian people came to this world to teach and give humans the key to open your eyes within Anunnaki claimed himself like those protecting humans from the species like snakes and the giants. The idea of human gods. The Anunnaki claimed to protect us from snake-like aliens. Okay, I'm following you. Was created in Atlantean times by the Arturians and the Orion people. Arturians. Arturians, that sounds familiar. Who are the Arturians? Um, Rocketman13 asks, what is my email? Reasonandtheology at gmail.com. Syrian people came to this world in a triangle spaceship. They, they came to this world in a triangle spaceship? Man, this is straight out of Stargate because what was it? What was his name? Uh, the first the first guy that they fought in season one, who they also fought in, um, was it raw? I think it was raw. Yeah. Um, or no, it was raw in the movie. And who's the guy that they fought in season one of Stargate? Cause he had a triangle ship as well. So maybe the writers of Stargate knew something. Maybe they're Anunnaki. Maybe they're Jesuits. Maybe they're hiding all this stuff because they had depicted in season one a triangle spaceship. And now we're finding out that that's actually real. So maybe the writer of Stargate is part of the Atlantis people or the Mu civilization, maybe. Apophis, Mahovel says. That's right, Apophis. Apophis's ship was a triangle, was it not? architects of this world how to create the pyramids on this planet the concepts and the ideas that we have of gods and goddesses is really mistaken by history it's mistaken by history i mean and for what we saw from the video you know for this advertisement from what we saw he knows his history Man, he is credible historically. Um, all y'all historians out there, ancient Near East historians, all y'all, y'all just got debunked and exposed by Matthias. He he showed y'all. He showed y'all. And you got your work cut out for you now. 
I don't know. I mean, I part of me wants to believe that they don't really believe this stuff. Part of me wants to believe that, but unfortunately, I know people. Um and I've I've lost a lot of confidence in some people um because of some things that I've seen. So I actually am inclined to think that Matthias and Associates and the ancient alien astronaut theorists really do believe this stuff that that's very concerning canadian catholic thank you for your um uh super chat you should respond to my critique of material sufficiency i have no idea what your critique of material sufficiency is um have we spoken before i don't know what your what your critique is you'd have to fill me in there um but i haven't seen anything in response to material sufficiency that I've found um, cogent. And I'm, I'm willing to be swayed to the part on part of view. I'm definitely willing to be swayed. I just, I haven't seen anything adequate there. <sighs> well, we're going to have to do more of these. This was interesting. This was fun. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I hope y'all did. <laughs> I can't take anymore. It, it, it's kind of like, you know, you have you have some cake. It, it's a little bit of it is good in moderation, but you don't need too much of it. I'll tell you a funny story. One time, I I um wanted to just see what it tasted like. I just had to know. So I took a piece of chocolate cake. I added a brownie. I added a donut. I added chocolate ice cream with whipped cream, <laughs> with nuts, with chocolate syrup and caramel syrup. All, all mixed in. Uh, hot, hot fudge, I think, was on there too. Um, all mixed in. And I tasted it, and it was the most disgusting thing I've ever tasted. <laughs> too much of something good can be disgusting, and it can be repulsive. And that's how I'm feeling right now. This was fun for a while, but then it gets really old. <laughs> and you just think, I can't, I can't take it anymore. I can't take Matthias or Matthias. I've I've had a sugar overload on on his content. We're gonna have I'm gonna have to step away, and maybe after a few days of digesting this, maybe we can we can continue. But I've I've had my share of um, alien conspiracy theories for the day. Let me know y'all's thoughts though in the chat if y'all enjoy this. If you want to you know do do more of these lighthearted episodes, I'm definitely willing to do them as long as we can space them out, uh, so we don't get that sugar overload. Um, <laughs> <laughs> somebody says too funny michael you overdid it yeah i i learned that <laughs> i learned that i overdid that <laughs> i learned the hard way it was again the most disgusting thing i've ever tasted in my life all of those things individually considered are good um but when you put them all together it was absolutely disgusting i did not like it at all so yeah uh, <laughs> i had to throw it all away Okay. <laughs> Again, let me know your thoughts there in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And um, also check me out, patreon.com forward slash reason theology if you uh, appreciated what we're doing here and you want to support us. All right. We'll see you later. Everybody have a good night.